Hello everyone, this is Gail. I have finally come up with a cane that I want to show you. This is one that I almost didn't do it because I needed to review uh, the steps because it's been a while since I've done it, but I like it so much. I just thought I would have to show it to you anyway. Now this can be done a lot simpler. I'm going, I've shown you Skinner blends before, but this time I'm going to do a, a four part Skinner blend. Instead of just doing like purple and white or blue and white, I'm going to do a black to purple to blue to white. They're not in the right um, order here, but if you see here, I have. I've already cut my clay. Now this one is um, the white and it's about two inches wide and about six inches long and I cut it from corner to corner to make a right angle. And this is going to go on this side of my blue clay. Like that. And then I'll pull this off. And then we have the purple. This is also, this is about, the blue and the purple are about three inches by two inches. And then the black, I'm going to re just flip around. And now you see we have a four part, uh, what's going to be a Skinner blend. Now some of the white is. Uh, if you saw me condition my white, you would understand why I have white all over everything. My, my white was very dry, and I ended up really having to condition it, and I, I crumbled it up, and I added clay softener, and I finally got it to where it was workable. But this is going to be a basket weave cane, and let me show you. Here's a pendant that I made with a very similar pattern. And this one, you know, I'm going to try to do a little bit better. This was my first try at a basket weave, and I don't think it turned out too bad. I kind of like that. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to run this through the pasta machine on the thickest setting, and then I'm going to uh, bring it down to a number three and blend this until I have a dark purple all the way through the purple, the blue, and the white to a light blue. So I will be back as soon as I get that blended. Okay, now I've got this blended pretty well, and you'll see and there might be some little flecks on it, but that's not going to matter. That's another thing that Donna Cato taught me is not to worry about little things like this little fleck here on the see that on the white part or the light blue then I've got light blue here on the black but when you're doing your uh, your work you're not going to notice these little things so I've taken her at her word and so far it's been right but I'm just trying to get some of the crumbs off I'm having problems with the crumbly edges now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half long ways. Still have my light at one end and the dark at the other. And I'm going to run this through the pasta machine this way. I've been running it this way, but now I'm going to run it. You know, I've been running it through this way. Now I'm going to run it through this way. And I'm still on the thickest setting, so just a minute. <laughs> This made it a little bit longer, but we really need to go really, really long. So what I'm going to do is, I'll go up, well, no, I won't even go off camera. I'm going to go down two notches, which is to my number two, and I'll run it through. Okay, that got it through a little bit longer. Now I'm going to go through it a number three. And I think 
shall go down to a number five. Once you get to these thinner settings, you can go two settings at a time. see how long this is now it goes all the way down to the black and I'm gonna go one more time I'm gonna go down to a number seven I just hope I can manage this as it comes through You can tell by how long the pasta machine's going as to how long this is getting. <laughs> okay, now this is about probably over three feet long. And I'm going to drape it over my pasta machine so I don't lose it. And I'm going to cut a straight line if I can get down to a blade I'll cut a straight line I don't want to lose too much of this color so I'm gonna to try to do as much as I can and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fan fold and to do a fan fold You, you start with one end and I'm going to start with this and I'm going to try to measure just a little bit just so I can get a general idea. You want it to be about an inch and a half long which will be about here. And I'm not going to measure every one but just go in with your fingers I know you can't see, but I'll show you on the next one. And then you fold this one back, and you're going to remember how you used to make a fan when you were a kid, or maybe you still do. Do a fan fold and just rub it and make sure that your air bubbles are out. I feel like I'm yelling. I probably am. The camera's right here. There's no need for me to yell. But let me move this across my pasta machine a little bit. But going narrow like this helps to give you a real nice blend. The thicker your clay, the more you see the variation in color between the layers. And you really don't want to see too much of that. You want it to be kind of seamless. And of course, being this wide, I'm not doing very well keeping it straight. So let me try to straighten it out a little bit. I can trim the edges to make them straight. I just want to try to get this blend so that it's blending straight. Or folding straight, not blending straight. Let me slide this down across my pasta machine again. I may be able to take it off the pasta machine now. This was really long, but it's so much fun. Anyway, I'm going to still just continue to fan fold until I get to the end. And again, I'm deviating from being straight maybe if I do it this way it'll make it easier
Just make sure there's no air in there, no bubbles. Now we're getting down, at least we're down to the dark, dark purple. And this will slowly fade into black. It's kind of hard to tell where the purple ends and the black begins. Which means it was a good blend. And I kind of got this t tangled up on the end, but it's just one layer, so I don't think it'll matter. Okay, so now we've got this, and what I'm going to do is roll it with my roller to try to get most of the air out. And don't push real hard, but push hard enough to get air out of it. And flip it over. This side is probably better. But you've got your loaf. And then you just cut your ends. Trim your ends so that they're straight. Forgot to turn my TV down in the other room. I hear Dr. Phil's music. I usually try to remember to turn it down. I, I watch the news... And then sometimes I watch my uh, Rachel Ray. And then I usually come in here and I, I try to turn the TV down. But there you go. You can see we've got a nice blend from light blue to blue to purple to dark purple to black. All right, let me just look at my notes because I don't want to mess up. I, I messed up on another one not too long ago. But um, what you want to do now is cut this in half this way. So let me measure. It's not quite two inches, so it would be just a little more. Let's see. It's about one and seven eighths so if I cut it right there that ought to be about half and what we're going to do is make sure the blade goes all the way through and then we're going to feed the white or the light blue together and try to match up the edge so we don't have to trim any more than we have to. Okay, so now we've got this this wasn't trimmed exactly straight, so let me just trim this side off so that this end is straight. There. Now, what I need to do, and I think I put it away. I forgot. I needed white again. I'm going to put a, I'm going to roll some white to a number five. And I'm going to put a sheet on the top and on the bottom, but I don't have it out right now. So let me go get that out, and I will be right back. Okay, I, what, silly me, wasn't even thinking. I still had the white left here from the triangle that I didn't use, that I would cut. So let me just cut. This is rolled out to a number five on my pasta machine. And I'm just going to lay this on top and trim down the sides and then flip it over. 
got a little bit of blue on it, but that's okay. There's a lot of blue in this cane, so it doesn't really matter. And then take the other side and do the same thing. So we've got the same edging on all, both sides of the cane so far. See, we have white now on both sides, on this side and that side. Just kind of defines a little bit. Now we're going to take the black, and this is rolled a little thinner. This is to a number six on the pasta machine. And you can see my clay picked up some other colors as it went through, so I'll just skip that part. But this is a number six, which is a pretty thin setting. Well, I didn't get this to stick very well, so just lay it on here. So number six. I'll try to trim it a little bit better so it will stick the next time. I try to keep my scrap separated. I have my black on one place, my light blue, my white, and then my mixtures from where I trim it over here. So. Let me put black on this side. Let me trim this way. Pull that off. Trim this way. I pull that off, which is what I should have done on the other side, because I think I'll have to trim it again. And then just trim down the sides. It still didn't, it stuck to my work surface, which is really the way I like it, but let me just trim so that there's no little scraggly edges. Because this is going to be a really neat looking cane when we finish. And let me do the same on the other side. stretch this just a little bit when I put it on. So it, let me push some black. Let me just cut a very thin piece because I just stretch this enough that some of the white is showing here. There. That's better. So now we have this. We have the light to blue to dark purple to black. Then we have a sheet of white and a sheet of black on each side. Now what we need to do is reduce this cane. And we're going to reduce it long ways. So because it needs to be reduced while it's warm, and it should be fairly warm now because we've been working with it. I'm going to go ahead and start reducing. Now you can do different things. I just realized I never did find my brayer. It's somewhere. So I usually use my brayer. It's easy to, easier to roll this. But you can just roll and turn and roll and turn and just keep doing this and it will gradually get longer. And then you want to pull and twist and tug like you do, you know, just make sure that you get twisted a little bit and that keeps the ends that gets the inside 
um, keeps the inside warm and moving. And you just keep doing this until this is about 19 inches long, 18, 19 inches long. And just, like I said, I, I like to stretch it every once in a while. It helps to keep it straight. Now see what this is doing? It's pulling in here on the side, and that's because I let this sit while it was still, um, you know, when I was working with it, the white, the lighter color is the first I worked with, so it cooled off quicker than the others. So I just need to just kind of work in pulling the inside a little bit. And again, you can roll and turn, roll it. Make sure when you roll it, you roll it on all four sides because you don't want to reduce it wonky, which is a technical term, at least to me. I use it often enough because somehow my canes always end up being wonky. I recorded a video uh, yesterday and it was a Tupelo LLC uh, video. And after I finished it, I didn't like it. And the problem is, I used a lot of clay. And I used um, just about all of my white Primo, which is what I was using. Because they don't sell Kato. This is a Kato cane. This one's made out of Kato clay. But I need to use Primo in my other videos because that's the kind of clay that they carry and I should be using their products. And I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to just let it go the way it is, which is better than nothing, but I'm really not happy with the cane itself. It's going to be the first of a series, so what I'm thinking is maybe I'll go ahead and post this video, but I'll just make another cane by the time we get to the end of the series. And you'll see why I don't want to give away too much. I want you to watch my video. But just know the one that's coming out on Monday... Well, actually, you won't even see it till the next week because I had to do it in two parts because it was so long. But I was not happy with the way it turned out. Okay, this is, it's, it's reducing, but like I said, it's Kato clay, so it's a little bit slower to reduce, which is a good thing because... Usually when you reduce something quickly, it distorts. And I'm going to have to cut this in a little bit because it's going to be too long. Too long to work with on my, I think this is a, is it a 12 inch tile? Yes, it's a 12 inch tile and it's already 12 inches and I need to go about six more, but maybe I can do it at a slant. Let me just move my clay out of the way. We're going to have a rainy holiday weekend here in Virginia. There's a tropical storm coming. And it's not supposed to hit us here in central Virginia. Of course, I have come to learn, to, you know, I've learned through the years that you really can't tell with a tropical storm or a hurricane. They're going to do what they want to do. And you can predict and, you know, all you want, but you're just making a guess. And especially when you have a European model and a 
American model and they don't say the same things. Let's see, this is about just maybe a few more inches left. Let me do it this way. This is another thing is stretch and stroke or stroke and stretch as you go. And that helps also to keep your edges even. And you can actually feel the clay and see, you know, you'll know whether it's bigger or smaller. Whoops, I just pinched that. I probably shouldn't have done that. I'll try to make one of my cuts there. That should be about 18 inches long. Let me just roll this and where I pinched too hard. Hear all my clanking. It's my all my clay tools over here. Okay, let me I'm just gonna say this is. on my instructions again because goodness knows I don't want to mess this up. Okay, and we... Alright. So let me cut the ends off. I won't cut the other end until I get down to that end. But now we cut... I wonder why it says this. It says to reduce till it's 19 inches long and then cut it into 12 one half inch sections. Well, that's only six inches. That's not right. I think it's one and a half inch sections. I think my, I wrote my instructions wrong. So let's do 12 times one and a half is 18. So that's about right. So let's do one and a half inch sections. Like I said, I just wrote it down wrong. Sorry, I got quiet again. I'm just thinking here. I'm not going to measure this. I'm going to just take one and put it next to it because I can't cut all the way down with my blade with the with the ruler sitting there because it sits up a little bit. So I'll do it this way. Let's see, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Because a couple of them are a little bit wonky, 
I'm going to see because I do have a little bit extra here, enough for one more. And I think I will take this one out and put that one in. So there's my six canes. Now, now what we're going to do and try to keep these as flat this way as you can because you're going to be putting them together. So what you're going to do is put these together alternating. Let me come in. Alternating the direction that they go in. So this one will go this way and this one that way. Just cutting these kind of make it a little bit flat on one end. And then you go back to this direction. Oops. I wish there was a way I could turn my camera without totally destroying everything to show you. How, uh, how my setup is over here to the right, to my right. All right, now we're going to start a separate row. And see the reason I'm rolling? See how this one is a little bit wider on this end than it is on that end? I'm just rolling it just to level that out a little bit. So I'm going to put this one in the opposite direction as that one. Let's see. So that goes this way. And this way. And that way. It doesn't hurt to take these and flatten them out because you want your you want them to be as even as you can so that they'll look like they're in a weave. You can see the basket weave starting to form. And it'll look even better once it's reduced a little bit. kind of roll it to make everything even. And you can see the basket weave. Now there are a few little hairline places in these corners that maybe I don't think you can see through them. But once you reduce it, those will go away. So let's just reduce this just like we did the other one. Just press on the sides. Unfortunately, this is one of those canes that you need to do and reduce all at the same time. So if you don't have time to reduce them, don't, to reduce it, then don't even get started because 
if the clay war cools off, even this has cooled off on the inside already. It's a little bit concave here. So, you, you know, it, it's it doesn't take long. It depends on the temperature of your clay room. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, don't try to do it too quickly. But just try to, you know, when you're while you're working, twist a little bit to warm up the inside. I mean, you can roll with your roller. You can see it's beginning to get longer. But just take your time. Uh, that's my biggest problem. I am so impatient. And I just usually am too quick to reduce. Most canes, you want to let them rest before you reduce them. This one, you don't want to let it rest because you don't want it to be firmer on the outside than it is on the inside. I know that makes no sense to you, but But anyway, just squeeze. Take turns squeezing and rolling. And twisting and pulling. And you can tell, you can feel it when it starts to move. It's really a, a cool feeling. I remember the first time that I felt that. I went, oh man, this is what they were talking about. But once it's all the same temperature, it'll just suddenly start to move. That's one way you can tell when you have an old cane if um, if it's going to if if it's able to be reduced. You take a cane, an old cane, and you warm it up. And I pro I usually just wrap mine in this plastic wrap and put it in my bra and just do whatever I'm doing for a couple hours and then I know it's warm all the way through and try to pull in the center a little bit so we can get the concaveness going and this is beginning to move now if you're using Primo it'll move much quicker so don't be concerned if you start feeling it move quicker, like I said, this not only is Kato, but it's old Kato, but it's beginning to move now. I can pull it and stretch it. And what I'll do is probably cut this in half. Actually, I think I'll reduce it until it's I'm able to cut it into fourths. And I'll make another square. Let's see if I can reduce this. Well, let me go ahead and cut it in half. Let me see what I've got here. I've got about five inches, so I'll cut it at two and a half inches, which is about right there. And I'll turn my blade around because that was the sharp side, but this is my dull blade. But see this, and then you you just turn it this way. Now this is three by four, so you can put it together and match it on the top, and then make sure it matches on the bottom. There you go. See how pretty that's becoming and you just continue to do the same thing just roll and stretch and twist and pull and when it's long enough you can cut it in half again 
Let's see, now that this is moving, I'll be able to pull it a little bit. Which is really a good way because it keeps everything straight. I think I said that before. Oh, that's good. I, lo I love to feel it when it starts to move. Then I know my clay is in good condition. So that's three and a half. So one and three quarters will be right here. And I'll cut that in half. Now, if I put, you have to be careful. If I put it together this way, you'll see these things match. So what you have to do is turn it around the other way so that you'll get the opposite direction of those tiles. But match it up the best that you can. And there you go. There is a basket weave cane that you can you can reduce it further to make this smaller. Let me get my necklace out again. This one is just about this a little bit smaller than this. Sorry, I moved out of frame. But my necklace is a little bit smaller than this, so I would reduce this a little bit more. Uh, if I wanted to do something to match it, and since I don't have earrings to match it, I think I might reduce it really small and make me some earrings. But there's your basket weave cane. It can be, there's so many things you can do with it. I showed you the, the necklace. But I hope you try this cane. It's, it's a little complicated. But I'm, I think some of you now that you practice a little bit, you're ready for a little bit more complicated cane. So give it a try and let me see what you do. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.